There's two common things that happens during kendo practice, especially when we're trying to understand when to attack and how to attack and how to approach our opponent. Being hit when we're trying to get our opponent to react. And that your shinai keeps getting deflected or you keep getting countered. There could be many reasons for that, but today this video is going to be about how to use Ma'ai in order to make an opportunity for you to strike and try to understand what type of opponent you have in front of you. Before I talk about Ma'ai, I have to talk about reach. We all have a sweet spot in our reach where we feel that we can attack with power, with control, with speed, and we're always trying to expand this reach, right? And we're always trying to be able to attack farther. A couple of things you have to be mindful when you're training your reach. One of them is that the farther away you attack from your opponent, the more chances your opponent has or the more time your opponent has to deflect and counter your attack. So it's not about how far you can go and how far you can actually make contact, but also about figuring out what is the right distance for you to attack and for your opponent to be caught off guard. The other part you want to be mindful when talking about reach is that you don't only want to work on the farthest part of your reach, but also the closer part of your reach. Especially during Jigeiko, the distances are going to change and if your opponent is moving towards you, you have to feel confident and be able to attack your opponent at this distance. How to attack at a shorter distance, how to have good control, power, and explosivity, and also continuation for another technique. A lot of times that closer part of our reach tends to become a little bit uncomfortable, especially if you're not used to being able to do a strong fumikomi in a short distance. We tend to go sometimes in autopilot and we're not necessarily aiming. And when I talk about aiming, I'm talking about using the right part of your shinai to make contact on your proper target. The way I think about it is I want to hit my opponent with the farthest part of my shinai and in the soonest target that I can get. So for example, for men, I want to hit the proper target. I don't want to go past it because if I go and I launch forward, the moment where I'm going to do my tenouchi is going to be farther than it needs to be. If you're fighting somebody that knows what they're doing, that they have good timing and they have good control of their distance, they can hit you before you finish your cut. Something that makes it super easy for me to remember during practice is put the leather to the cloth. So let's talk a little bit about how to use the distance between you and your opponent. I got the idea of making this video because I noticed a lot of times people start the engagement with each other at a very close distance. I like to have that engagement before my shinai touches my opponent's shinai. If you start your engagement farther out, even that first step where you're approaching your opponent, maybe this can get a reaction from your opponent already that you are able to capitalize on. It's very useful to have a little bit more distance where you have that engagement and you start seeing what kind of reactions you get because you can use this to start communicating with your opponent. What are you trying to communicate? At least let me tell you what I'm trying to communicate. When I go into Kamai with my opponent, I'm trying to communicate that I'm coming in and I'm going to attack. I want my opponent to feel that I am a threat and that I will come in to do a technique. And I also want to feel that for myself. I want to feel that I'm coming in and nothing's going to stop me in order to do my technique. It doesn't mean that I made a decision what technique I'm going to do, but I want to have that feeling that I'm coming in. I try to get that feeling by making sure that my first step, I don't just stop and become flat-footed. Therefore, it's very important that you pay attention how to use your footwork and you understand how to be relaxed but engaged at the same time. There's many ways that you can use your footwork in order to start approaching your opponent to try to get a reaction and then attack. A lot of this stuff can be very overwhelming, especially to think about it during Jigeiko. I'm saying this because I don't want you to get caught up on thinking too much. It's better to just enter an attack and learn from the failures and the successes. If you come in and you get hit, at least you can ask yourself, why did I get hit? Why did I do wrong? And when you come in and you see the opponent kind of like flinch, you can ask yourself, oh, what did I do now? So if you feel like you're getting overwhelmed by this during practice, just throw it out the window and just come in and attack. I have to remind myself to do that more often actually. But I do want to share with you a couple of things that maybe you can do to start practicing this on your own. One of them is trying to understand how to move that right leg forward slowly and then launch into a technique, keeping that back leg engaged. 
So you can play it a lot with the timing and the speed of how you approach your opponent. The one thing is that every time you move your back leg, you have to move it quick and sharply. The other part you want to practice is being able to come in, understand how to put the pressure, and then adjust to the distance that you may have from your opponent. A good way to practice this during Kihon, asking your partner to maybe take half a step sometimes, or maybe take a full step and change the distance, do it at different timings, so you can not only practice adjusting the distance, but also understanding, oh, when is my moment to come in so you can attack. I think I talked a lot about different concepts briefly on this video. So if you have anything you want me to explore further, make sure you go down in the comments and let me know. Please also hit the like button because it lets me know that you're enjoying these videos and keeps me motivated to make more. And it really helps the channel grow. So please hit the like button. The main concept or the main message that I want to push with this video is to don't wait to be here to get a reaction from the opponent. Once you're here, your kendo becomes more reactive. So anything that could happen here can get a big reaction from anybody. And also, especially when you're fighting someone around your same level, is that it can become very messy. So even if you got a reaction, there are high chances that with a little motion, your shinai can get deflected and nobody really gets the technique, becomes a little bit of a wasted opportunity. So try to understand coming in, setting up your footwork and being able to push in to get a reaction from your opponent to attack. Let me know if this works for you. Let me know if you find this useful. Normally I do live streams on the weekend, so you can make sure that you're subscribed to the channel so you get a notification when I go live. But if you wanna keep exploring more of these concepts, you might wanna check out this video right here. I do live streams normally on the weekends. You can join me, ask your questions live, or you can come watch Kendo together with me. If you haven't, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you know when I go live. It also helps this channel grow if you hit the like button. Thank you very much for watching. Please share this with someone you want their kind of to improve.